Good evening, guys. Ken of Tortoise Capital, nightly strategy podcast for Sunday, November 6, 2022. Uh, we're going to be looking at the weekend swing trade frames from Ken H. and uh, Chi Wang Chong. Uh, I wanted to just start by sharing with you a quick practical exercise that we used this weekend with the super traders from the Tharp Institute examining fundamentals of trading and breaking down your process into small pieces that you could then uh, begin to master by being self-regulated. This is consistent with Josh Kaufman's for uh, learning in the first 20 hours. Deconstruct, then learn, remove barriers to development, and then practice. And we made the connection to rifle marksmanship, soccer, trading, and then did an extended discussion of the uh, new Tharp Institute trading excellence model, which you can see on the screen there. And this is just a worksheet that you might use to listen to that uh, extended discussion and um, do a mind map on the issues that uh, resonated with you. And if you're interested in sharing those, that would be awesome to support the dialogue. Uh, I also spent some time uh, on that podcast taking a look at the uh, trading ecosystem that you see here, which represents our uh, what I consider to be the uh, trading mastery framework for the our style of trading that includes plan, prepare, execute, assess, treats our learning as an ecosystem. Um, it it describes trading as a process of learning about the market, learning what's working. So if you pay attention to how you learn as an adult with learning preferences and skills, my argument is that that supports the development of trading proficiency because you're really learning new things about the market in your engagement and dialogue with the market. If you consider the market to be the greatest teacher about the market, then approaching it as a student uh, should help you uh, figure out what's working and leave aside your preconceived notions that might not be working. And so in my view, the focus on learning has a very practical payoff for developing trading proficiency. So I discussed a little bit of that in the uh, dialogue with the Tharp Super Traders, and I wanted to share that with you. All right, let's jump into the uh, uh, trade frames. Really appreciate the hard work the guys are doing to uh, <coughs> set us all up for success. So this is Chi Wing Chong's uh, weekly summary of the RL30 slopes the Z scores of uh, the S&P, which you see is now rolled up to 1.0. Uh, finance is leading the way and is approaching two. Energy has started to roll over, so we would not be surprised to see some cyclic weakness coming into that sector. Um, materials are uh, above one. And starting to flatten out a little bit, but still growing. Uh, the market is at a natural respiratory pause at 1.0. It had gotten as high as 2 on that last surge. That That's the surge that took it up to about 430 back in August. So uh, this one represents um, a peak, a local peak, prior to the election to see what, what we may see. Now, to me, the interesting one is technology, that if, if energy relinquishes the leadership role to technology and finance, too, I'm, I'm watching to see if technology is able to respond to the end of the election cycle next week and resume a leadership position once we get some certainty about who's winning the House and Senate. The relief rally from that, regardless of the outcome, could be considerable, and there's room in XLK to resume that leadership position. That's not a guarantee, but uh, the changing of the political economic environment could certainly lead to that kind of response, so we'll be ready for that. 
in the comparison of XLY, which is consumer discretionary and XLP, uh, we're still in this condition from about uh, mid-October in which the staples, the defensive plays, are outperforming the uh, consumer discretionary. So this is a model in which the defensive plays and a bird in the hand are still, uh, that's still good policy. And I think that works until we get through the election cycle. Uh, if we saw a resumption in tech, if tech gets better, then I would expect XLY also to get better, and then the um, XLP companies of the world to kind of stabilize. Now, we've seen some extraordinary moves in the XLP guys like McDonald's and Coke um, and, uh, and Walmart. So it's a question of whether or not that strength is going to rotate to the discretionaries and to tech. So we'll be postured for that critical state in the broad markets and the sector sector leadership, if I can say it that way. All right, into the frames. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, first up, ExxonMobil, and now you can see uh, the, the power of energy uh, and the fact that it was able to get above these weekly resistance levels. That's all free and clear and going. Uh, Ken H is well into this, into this one here, where he's got uh, an SS or I'm sorry, a Kata two, and a second position um, after a, a very nice stop in reverse, and, and a couple false starts. Now notice he manages his risks carefully on that, uh, and when it doesn't work, he flips, uh, and that's looking pretty good. This one was such a good trade, an SSC on the. 30 minute a second position when it had cleared resistance uh, and then when that didn't work he gets out of that quick and is able to make bank on the big first leg and then after a couple caught a two false starts he takes the emerging dragon uh, gets the second position um, now with that price level here uh, and weakness starting to creep into energy I don't think I would let that go below 110 to be honest. Uh, I'd like to see this go. If it goes, I would try to get that locked in. I feel like energy is more at the end of the run, closer to the end than to the beginning. So I would just be mindful of that potential rotation. Uh, natural gas. Um, this one I think is easier to trade on the daily and weekly swings. What makes this nice is that the weekly swings are pretty evident between 19 and 32. Um, this this entry here I think is well placed because it has given you some clear Kata 2 signals uh, but you've let it get out of the chop so you didn't get chopped around and there's still room for it to make up this gap to get to fair value somewhere around 23 and then 25. If it gets above, say, 25, I think that's where you can look at a second position. But I think you've got a nice uh, tactical trade to the upside available there. Uh, this is uh, Sun Power Corp., uh, a solar company. Um, this is one where, you know, our attention was drawn to the broader indexes, and so we probably missed this this opportunity for a supported fall crossing and then a uh, collapsing dragon with an R10 wiggle. That's that's a signal that it, um, other times that are maybe less busy, we should be able to pile on to that one. That's this combination of a double failure at, resi at support and then the R10 wiggle. We might have been able to get that. And man, that, that was certainly tradable on the 30. But I do like this like a Kata 2 right here. And I think as long as your stop is somewhere down around 17, this thing has room to go. Uh, I don't think if it gets below 17, I'd be interested in holding this 
to see if it'll hold at 1550 unless that's already baked into the cake for you um, but if it gets above 19 you certainly got to lock that in uh, and then this doesn't look like much resistance in here this all looks like free fall so my that's this space over here I, I think you don't get resistance till about 23 or maybe 2450 as you show that that still has some possibilities I just think you got to decide how aggressively you want to do you want to put your stop here or here deciding how much how much risk you have that's still in the early days of that trade uh, FCX Freeport Moran I really like this uh, position here because the longer term posture uh, whoops. Uh, the longer term posture has cleared the weekly consolidation and you're just starting the PSAR flip and this is the beginning of a move to take it back up to 42 so this entire uh, this entire chop it feel that's this that it feels like it's been left behind so I think as long as you've got a wide stop, you're, if your stop was somewhere down around 28, you're using about a maybe a four dollar stop is my guess. Uh, you're in good shape. I think I'd probably go ahead and have my stop here around, just so that I could lock in some gains. I want to lock in that gain, and I think this has room to go. And I would be looking to continue this gain. So if we saw a relief rally. Um, based on commodities over the next couple of weeks, Freeport Moran is really well postured to take advantage of that as the industrial raw material supplier to the world. Alcoa, uh, kind of in the same condition on the weekly and daily, you know, with the uh, support levels kind of built in and then pushing to the top of that it's not as far up the stack as Freeport Moran was but it looks like the resistance over here is less uh, and you can see what a uh, how wild that has been this is why it's been a great intraday trader uh, if you're willing to trade this on the swing you know if you're getting the breakout above you know say 44 uh, I think you I think you want a relatively wide stop for your initial position maybe a five dollar risk um, you might, if you wanted to be aggressive, I think you could take the top of the RL10 and say, hey, that was the breakout above this resistance in here or that, that chop. So you could actually use about a $2 stop or a $5 stop, depending on how aggressively you wanted to play that. On the other side, uh, if this fails to the downside, then it's a relatively straightforward um tactical short down to 37 because you're seeing so much directional volatility in here that if it fails to break out then the next logical thought is well it's probably going to fall back down to here so this is one that's uh an excellent intraday trader it might become a good swing trader if it can get above 44 and head towards 50 but uh, uh, i would let's see it prove that uh, treasuries, this is one that I think we just should have been better on, uh, and I'm, when I say we, I mean me. Uh, we had plenty of indications that this thing was failing, um, and I should have done better at highlighting that slide. I mean, we talked about it in the dailies, but I don't think we made it clear enough why this was a really powerful macro move. Um, and you can see we're in this PSAR flip area here. And uh, this could very easily come back down to test 92. And if it doesn't, if it makes a run to the upside, then a move to 98 is well within reason. And with about a $1 stop in here, you get a really favorable move in either direction. And it's so liquid um, that I think that that's, that's a tactical trade that can be taken. And we'll see if the strong dollar starts to weaken, which will make that tend to rise so there's a real powerful swing trade to the upside here baked into the cake almost stealthily uh, the yield on that's pretty good though you know what with the Fed raising rates and stuff so 
Uh, and treasuries, the inflation-protected treasuries are starting to respond nicely, too. Now, this is a nice one in the queues. Uh, he's been trading this one actively. Here was a short uh, that um, with the second position short that this basically broke even. Um, this one might have captured a short one. I think there was some belief uh, and ended up just taking a micro loss here, and that looks like a stop and reverse to me, I, I think. Um, if that's a stop and reverse, I would really be prepared to lock that in. Uh, in case we get the relief rally next week with tech in the lead. I think that's a real strong possibility. On the other hand, a failure below 260 looks decisive because that's going to break this RL30 belly, and that's the support on the weekly, and then that is going to presage two more years of just pain and suffering. So 260 looks like a, this is about as nice a base as you could get, and a move to 285 should not be surprising. That's a that's a 10% move. So you've got a lot of opportunities on this one. This should be one of your prime targets. Uh, Team is a technology software um, company. Um, boy, bad earnings and all bets are off. You know, the former trading range just got obliterated here. And this feels... So this is going to be a Godzilla, essentially, and this is in your specialty area. I sort of like the idea that they were willing to hold that support level over the weekend, and I would not be surprised to see tactical trades up to about 150. That's sort of the the relief rally could take you that far. Uh, there'd have to be real persistent buying to get it up through here. Um, but as a software company, they got low overhead, and they should be able to figure out what their future earnings and potentials are. I, I like this one as a uh, as a Godzilla tactical trade. And then let the tactical trade grow into a swing trade as it tries to climb back to 200. But boy, was that ever a miserable move. I mean, that's a uh, minus 40%. So those guys are in a state of shock. But that also means that this if this is a true base, then that, that becomes a nice place to start building a longer-term position. That's your area of expertise. Uh, R-E-L-L, uh, Richardson Electronics, Technology Electronic Components. Uh, this one is, this looks like the fireworks. Now, what I would tell you is uh, the easy money feels like it's done. And uh, it's had 10 days and it's done nothing but consolidate. I, I think that looks like dead money to me, actually. But where I'd be interested is a breakdown in 23, could get it back to 21, and then 19. 19 is really where fair value feels like. That's this over here on the weekly. Um, and that's the support level here. So this, to me, looks like all tactical trading to the downside. And so if this breaks below 23, you might be willing to uh, try that on the short side, the failed the failed fireworks, if you will. But it's had, look, one, two, three, four efforts to try to keep going, and it's failed each time. So let's see if there's any more juice left in this thing. Uh, but I think you could be short at 23 and certainly not later than 22. And if 22 fails, then it's back to 20 and then 18. So the upside, sure, I suppose. But uh, if you would think that if there was a compelling reason to keep it going, that this would have maintained that upward momentum, but it didn't. So to me, the default thought is uh, be ready to get a tactical downside on that one. Super Micro Computer Inc. Computer Hardware. Uh, yeah, this is what almost like that software company we just saw. It's had its run, and then it couldn't make any new highs, and it's rolling over, and it's near the bottom of that. <coughs> Excuse me. It's near the bottom of this um, excursion, and it's sitting right at a support level. So I think this is a tactical short to here, and then if 72 fails... You could see how that could fail to 64 pretty easily as these, as this cautious buying 
begins to evaporate. Uh, so we'll see if this was a if this was a true breakout or if 72 can hold. But if you get the upside, if it gets above 84, maybe there's an opportunity. This move from 78 to about 84, that's pure tactical space. It hasn't proven anything until it gets well above. When you look at the weekly, you say, oh, that's a sign of failed follow-through because it's rolled all the way back. That's, that's what a technician would say. So I would be very cautious on this one. It's not a big name that's attracting a lot of money, so I would just be careful on that one. Uh, Starbucks. Uh, I just don't see how they're going to survive uh, as that as that growth company with their labor problems. I mean, this is almost four months of nothing, and it's near that high. Uh, that I don't see the um, the explosive growth and additions to the bottom line anymore. I just don't see that happening. So I would just treat this one, I think, as a as a failure opportunity to come back into this trading range until it proved otherwise. Uh, I suppose if it broke above 93, you could persuade that there was some upside to it, but uh, maybe I'm letting the bias with the fundamentals uh, intrude there, but uh, it's hard to see how institutional money would want anything to do with Starbucks. I don't know how they maintain their edge, especially in rising inflation. That's got to be one of the early things, and somebody's going to say, you know, instead of spending six bucks on coffee at Starbucks, maybe a buck and a half at McDonald's is what I want. I don't know. SPCE, Virgin Galactic. Boy, these guys have just fallen off the cliff in the uh, as the economy continues to get, to get murdered and they're out of the news. That's just pure dead money the whole way. So you've got essentially a Godzilla after this terrible sell-off, you know, from eight to four. That's another 50% move. And remember the last time we were looking at these guys actively, they were up around 20. So this has just been murdered. Um, I, to me, that's a tactical short to the downside. Uh, but the bones are pretty well picked clear. And um, I suppose there's an upside to it. But, you know, when you look back, when you look back through this entire period, you don't really see the explosive kind of optimism on this. This feels like dead money to me, honest. Um, that just looks like algorithmic trading back and forth. I don't, I don't really see a pattern or worth exploiting. I wouldn't touch it. Uh, Coinbase, on the other hand, still has some uh, enthusiasm, and I look at this as a Kata 2 opportunity to the upside. See, whereas, you know, who's the market for Virgin Galactic? I don't know. But I know who the market is for Coinbase. Millions of people with uh, cash. Uh, I like the short on the break of this support. And certainly 45 is in play. The only thing I would caution is is that this uh, this move above 70 showed was the first sign of breaking of this uh, resistance line that you showed. So there was some interest in it at that price level. It failed, and and that's a good time to be short. But I think I'd have my stop somewhere around 58. I want to get that locked in because um, when this thing reverses, there could very well be a relief rally. Uh, I don't want to let that winner turn to a loser. Uh, and then last one, but not least, Honeywell, just great American company, well-managed, maybe the best-managed tech company we have. It has made a clear breakout above the weekly uh, trading range, and uh, 218 is next in sight. They've got real earnings, and this is a nice breakout. Uh, I wish we could have gotten any of these Kata 2s, but I don't think it's too late. Uh, I love these guys as a company, well-run company. All right, that's everything we got here. We'll get this published and posted. Thanks for your kind attention. Let's get these guys tomorrow.